Fine, so we start in two minutes. Uh, uh, can you drive about your profile and your current project? Yes, are you audible? Yes. Okay. So uh, basically, I am currently working uh, associated with EADY, so it is scans and uh, based on that, the server safety vulnerabilities, uh, we are allowing uh, the uh, process to move further, like it's like normal lane or express lane deployment. So we have worked on this. So what is the advantage of using Spring or Spring Boot uh, as opposed to Java? Uh, as opposed to, means? Yeah. With comparison to Java, if you just use plain Java. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually Spring Boot helps in rapid application development process. So basically it gives us uh, production ready features directly. So uh, there is like attached Spring Boot application within that there is auto configuration feature. So it automatically configures all the dependencies and the class path. So uh, we don't have to manually configure it. So these are the things which we are getting it's as a benefit. And we are given with uh, our own embedded Tomcat server. So it's like embedded within Spring Boot. So and these are the features which makes it different from normal Spring Boot. Can we explain the Spring MVC architecture? The Spring MVC is a form of design pattern in which it includes a model part, view part and controller part. So controller part is basically the binding of the web request coming with that method bodies. So we can associate it with the help of uh, mappings like post mapping, put mapping, get mapping, get mappings. And uh, uh, for uh, view part we can make use of JSP or Angular part. And uh, there is uh, some layers for that like under it uh, controller layer, under it service layer. Service layer we are writing the business logic. So we are giving under it service to uh, uh, specify that this particular layer is for business uh, logic representation. And uh, at the repository we are writing as a separate interface layer for uh, writing any queries to interact with the Sorry, at the rate what? At the rate repository. So, okay. it's for interacting with TV. Sit in a towel layer. Okay. What is an auto wired annotation? So, with the help of auto wire, actually, it creates a dependency in such a way that uh, whenever we are writing a direct auto wire, we want a different class. So, it injects a dependency of another class into that class. So, basically, it uh, creates an inversion of control for Spring container and it uh, injects a dependency at runtime. Okay. What is the model attribute? Well, attribute it, it's basically used for uh, mapping the uh, detail layer uh, with the model layer. So, okay. how will you do the validations in Spring MVC? Uh, for validation part, actually, we can write over a class as saturated validated, and uh, uh, within that uh, method in the controller layer, we can write accurate valid and we can create a separate validator package. Uh, or else you can uh, put it in as a if condition and we can check the data for the field whether it's null or whether it's empty or else you can create a separate validator package and there you can write a logic and use it uh, the controller. this way we can use okay explain the model model map and model and view so uh, model layer is for interacting uh, with the web requests and uh, uh, for model and the data and it uh, maps the model part of our uh, uh, entity layers and different layers and then it maps it with the view layer so uh, to uh, bind both model and view we are using model and view attribute what is the binding result Okay. What is the role of add the annotation required? So Annotate required basically signifies that this particular uh, uh, this particular functionality it needs to be implemented. And, uh, that functionality needs to be uh, injected at runtime, and this okay. should be given the priority. Okay. 
So, what is the dispatcher servlet? Uh, dispatcher servlet is basically a front end controller. So, uh, basically, it uh, redirects the request based upon uh, doing the authentication properly, and then it will identify like which endpoint it will go, go, and then it redirects to that particular uh, microservice endpoint. Okay. It's like a front end controller. Okay. And what are the context load listener? What is a JPA and ORM? And how JPA and ORM are associated? Uh, JP, JPA is actually a specification, whereas uh, Hibernate uh, is a ORM framework. So how these two are associated? So actually JPA uh, is using Hibernate so we are not writing externally any Hibernate query. So whenever we are writing extends JPA, so whenever we are executing that, you will see that in a console it internally uh, writes the select queries. So Hibernate internally executes the queries. So we don't have to write it uh, again like opening transaction manager. Those things related to Hibernate we don't have to write. What are the entities in JPA? Entity is basically written for the class which needs to be mapped with the database. Like it is for mapping part. So if you are making the class as an entity class, so that particular class will be set for mapped with the that particular table. So here we can write like an ID for, the, for our ID. It can be auto generated. Then we can write a column for all the other fields. Yeah, and then we can write a table to specify what that entity. Yeah. So, uh, how the database transactions are used in JPA? Database transactions. Database transactions. What is the JPA is used for? So, how do you use it? So, uh, for that, actually, we can write our own logic to save data in JPA. So, uh, save method can be used for that. Repository dot save method. Or for update, actually, we can uh, write like update modifying, and then we can write our own query and create a method in the repository layer, and then we can auto wire that layer in the service layer, and we can call that method from the service layer. So like that, we can. So here, how JPA has helped you to do this? This you can do it in the plain JDBC connections. How will you use it with the, how the JPA has helpful in your database transactions? So. It actually after extending JPA repository, so it is giving their own inbuilt methods. So if we have to write our own methods, we can uh, write it over query and we can write Hibernate queries. We don't have to open connections that we have to do with JDBC. And for JDBC, we need, we need to know the exact SQL query. So here we, we can write Hibernate query as well. So there is no necessity like we need to know entire SQL query. So this is the advantage. Okay. How would you do? There is one request coming and you are going to have a response back. Within that, there are some database transactions happening. So how those transactions will be handled in JPA? Using JPA. So transaction uh, for that actually we can have uh, at the transaction annotation we can do. And then within that we can write a rollback for equal to exception dot class. So if we are writing it at a method level, then if that method is uh, co uh, connecting with the database, then it will uh, do that modification. And whenever there is uh, any exception or is there any issue coming coming while saving the data in DB or while updating, then it will be rolled back, and all the data will be put up as it was there before. With the logger message will be there in the console like this the exception is coming. So like that we can handle. Mm -hmm. uh, what is a JPA life cycle? JPA life cycle. It initializes uh, first and then uh, it uh, executes the query. And then mm -hmm. after execution is completed, it, I think it destroys. That particular okay. How would you do the pagination in JPA? 
for that actually we can uh, extend paging and sorting repository and uh, there actually we can pass the entity layer and with that we can pass the uh, primary key type and then we can uh, whenever we are writing any method within that then we can make it return type as page type uh, then uh, from the service layer we can auto buy the repository and we can store it into the page type and then uh, page by page we can execute it by uh, storing the data at once what is what is your at the rate spring boot application uh, at the rate spring boot application is a fundamental main applic uh, main annotation which is used in spring boot so basically it con consists of three things at the rate configuration at the rate enable auto configuration and component scan so this is uh, the fundamental thing which differentiates it from other spring and it uh, start, it gives us like auto configuration feature and it scans for all the components in the class path during the time. And what are the stereotype annotations? Yeah, stereotype annotations are at the component uh, within that it is having under it controller, under it service, and under it repository. So these three are the stereotypes. Can you explain them? Yeah. Can you explain them? Uh, which one? All three, whatever you have described in this answer. Okay. So at the controller or at the controller is written at the controller level over the class. So uh, with the help of which this particular player has been set up for uh, interacting with the web request and the uh, method binding. So at the current service is there, which is also an alias for at the So it signifies uh, that this particular layer is uh, meant for writing business logic and all. And at the repository is uh, uh, written over the repository layer, which, signi which signifies that this particular uh, interface layer has been uh, implemented for interacting with database, like data access uh, uh, type of operation will be performed. So uh, that at the component uh, and at the rate service is interchangeable, but at the rate controller and at the rate component is not interchangeable. We, if we interchange it, then uh, while hitting the request, then it will not be able to identify that resource. Uh, that endpoint will not be identifiable. And uh, at the uh, repository, uh, if there is no exception coming, then there is no issue. It, we can uh, replace at the uh, repository with at uh, component. But if uh, there is some exception coming, then the Spring will not be able to identify that. So if you are writing at the uh, repository, then Spring will understand like this is uh, semantic data access exception uh, is coming. So it's related to database. So we have it's a best practice to write at the uh, repository. What is the Spring profile and how will you inject it? Uh, actually, uh, Spring profiling has been uh, done to activate uh, the uh, particular profile which you want to use it in your application. So there, there are various type of profiles like uh, Dev profile. You can do it in application or properties by, by using Spring Spring dot profiles dot active as Dev, or else you can put annotation like direct profile and we can pass Dev. So like that you can. What is the role of Bean Factory? Uh, bean factory is basically uh, a factory class kind of thing which uh, uh, creates beans as and when required for a specific class so it actually identifies first like which all uh, classes are eligible for beans and those beans uh, will be uh, created as and when required and injected at runtime what is the role of application context it's in context uh, basically it's uh, just like a dispatcher servlet type of thing. So basically with the help of application context, uh, we can uh, provide the class path. There is like application context, uh, context equal to new class path application context. So uh, it is an interface and there is an implemented class for class path application context. And we can provide the path for that file. And then uh, with that, we can uh, do certain uh, session related work and we can call the business layer and do some uh, execution task execution uh, how kafka achieves the fault tolerance and scalability uh, kafka actually it's an async communication so uh, basically, there will be like a set of blockers, uh, uh, so it, it will be like a publisher subscriber model. So, whenever a uh, particular uh, publisher subs, uh, whenever there is a subscriber who subscribes to a particular uh, uh, topic, 
then actually there will be like a producer which uh, after producer which produces the data and there will be like a millions of records in the db so processing those millions of records in db is next to impossible so with the help of kafka it processes millions of records uh, that to in few seconds so it helps us in uh, scaling it very fast and uh, uh, it will produce the data and there will be like a we can make use of Kafka template and with the help of that we, we can produce and there will be a Kafka listener and which consumes the data. So the process is very fast. And how does it achieve fault tolerance? I think it can create a, a, a group of uh, separate separate brokers. So, as for that particular uh, group, there will be like a mapping for that consumer. So, uh, so whenever one of the uh, uh, group is down, then another instance will be there, uh, which will start working, and. Uh, it will make it fault tolerant so whenever some issue is coming at one of the group then another group will be there like in another instance which will start uh, working on its behalf so like that I think consumer group uh, feature will be there. Uh, what is the role of zookeeper uh, zookeeper I think first uh, we need to install Zookeeper and we need to start Zookeeper, then only we can start Kafka. So it's like interdependencies there. Yeah, without Zookeeper, we can't uh, run Kafka. Uh, uh, can you write a code for this list of numbers? Given a list of numbers use java strings to remove duplicates sort and then produce a unique list of sorted numbers in java 8 can you just uh, share your screen and probably write write down and put the code in the chat box what you told can i repeat it again yeah, uh, let's have a list of numbers, any list of numbers. So you need to find or remove the duplicate, sort, and then produce a unique list of sorted numbers. right like this uh, 
Okay. Should I have to send in chat also? No, no, fine. I'm just writing a code over here, pasting it on your this. You can paste it. Oh, uh, this one, yeah. If you can paste it, then you can paste it on your notepad. But can you just tell me what will be the output of this code? If it is not pasteable, then it's okay. I mean, yeah. Okay, fine. Is this ARR? Yes. Okay, you have not copied it fully. Iteration you are trying to modify the data. So it will throw a uh, concrete modification exception. It will throw concrete modification exception. So, what is the output of final output? within the iterator you are trying to modify the existing array list so it will throw concrete modification exception okay. it will just be an exception no no before that i think it will print it first so it will print one and then it will uh, print this exception Okay, so how will you solve this? Uh, we can make use of copy on write array list over here. Mm -hmm. To copy on write array list. So what is the difference? Mm. A copy on write array list is a fail safe iteration. So actually it surpasses any kind of uh, operations which has been done on the existing array list. So it's like a fail safe. So it uh, uh, actually it, uh, it doesn't throw the exception if you are trying to modify your existing list. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I have three microservices. Okay. Okay. Can I answer? Yeah. 
Sorry. Can I unshare the screen? Or? No, that is fine. You keep it that way. It's okay. Okay. Uh, I have three microservices A, B, and C. Okay. Client makes a call to microservice A. Okay. And then microservice A makes a call to B and C. Okay. Okay. And it concatenates the result and it returns the response. Okay. 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 Yeah. Now call to B. That is. Uh, calling to B microservice takes five seconds, and calling to C microservice takes two seconds. Mm -hmm. So, what is the minimum latency for the client? Minimum latency for the client. I mean that A is calling is taking five seconds. Okay. And B is taking two seconds. A is calling B and C. So when A calls B, it takes five seconds, and when B is calling C, it is taking two seconds. A is calling both B and C. Now it's internally calling, no? Or it's like sync call, by synchronous call. What? How it is happening? A calls to B and C. And then it concatenates the result and it returns it. So, what will be the minimum latency? So, like a combination of both. Sure. I think if A is calling B, it is. So how do you find out the latency? What do you understand by latency? Latency means how much time it takes for the response to come when the input is built. Inject right. So how much time it will take this one? Seven seconds. I'm not sure on that. Okay. And if you want to reduce the seven seconds, then what will you do? Uh, I will check like why response time is coming as five seconds while calling to me. And we will try to improve it. Like if there is any query related issue, then we will try to optimize it. Or we will try to reduce this A to B call time response, response time for it. Anything else you can think of? We need to find a reason, right? Like, why it is taking so much time? Then only we can reduce the time. Okay. So if you have optimized the queries, then what will be the this one latency? Uh, exactly, I can tell, but it will be reduced significantly. Like if uh, the main issue is with interacting with TPS and the data, then uh, the time will be reduced. So if there is like uh, thousands of records and uh, we are sending data in uh, bulk for like at the time. 20 calls happening, 20 records of fetching, then again 20 records like that. So, if we do like this, then we will like this, definitely will get reduced, and then we can see like okay. how much. So, let's say if it is a database call for calling B and it has been reduced to 3 seconds for B instead of 5, now it is 3. So, what will be the latency? Two will be around five. Okay. So A is calling microservice B and A is also calling microservice C. So the total latency would be how much? You are saying latency would be five. 
Uh, is there any formula for that? I'm not sure about that. Uh, okay. No, it is just understanding. No formulas. All the crown. So what else? We are left with. Yeah. So uh, how do you measure the performance of the microservice? How do you measure the performance of the microservice? Uh, performance uh, can be measured with the help of like uh, through app dynamics also you can see like if there is any uh, errors are coming so there also you can see and we can hit a uh, hit the uh, uh, end point uh, and then you can see the response time and the uh, help you can check with the help of actuator so uh, actuator is a specific help metrics for that so there are certain uh, method calls uh, URL callings that we can do for getting certain set of data so, so have you implemented this in your project actuator yeah Okay, so how did you measure your 15% increase in microservice speed? Actually, I have checked the response timing. So before our implementation, it was like a different way of implementation in the monolithic application. So uh, we have put up in microservice for that. So there, when we are checking the response timing, so it was so that's uh, by hitting through postman of that particular uh, region, like a site or UAT region, then uh, got the response time. So based on that. Okay. Well, thanks, Deputy. Thanks so much. What question do you have? Any question? What do you have? Any question? Great. So this was my interview with Chrysler Company. Okay, I hope you like this interview process so do comment it out below like how you enjoyed it have you learned anything new from this so i will keep on making this type of content again and again so keep learning and keep growing it's devji today signing off bye bye